Good morning, everybody. I want to start this video on active shooter situations by saying I cannot overstate how sad and how frustrated and how just plain angry I am that I feel this might be very relevant in the next coming weeks. There's been some really weird stuff going on in our country since the beginning of the year, actually since for a year and a half now, and my civil unrest videos on the YouTube channel have just exploded since what happened on January 6th. And I really, 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 really hope that I'm wrong in thinking that what I'm going to talk about in this video and the other videos in this series are maybe going to become more relevant for us. But that said, a lot of very smart people, experienced people, have brought me information that I'm going to share with you today and in the other videos in this series. Yesterday I did a kind of summary video about what active shooter situations are and about how our response in those situations should be to remember the words run, hide, and fight. And today we're going to focus on running. Running should be your first line of defense if you are in an active shooter situation. And in fact, in most physical self-defense situations, just getting out of there as fast as possible is the most certain way of making sure that you and your kids and the rest of your family make it to celebrate surviving the next day. So we're going to focus on running. And you want to ask three questions about running away in an active shooter situation. And those questions are when and where and how. Now, when to run, and that's rule number one of surviving this kind of situation, is to have a bias towards action. Move now, act early, act often. Move swiftly with focus, as Bill Packer used to say. Decide to move as soon as you see, or even suspect, real danger. And it doesn't have to be a panicked sprint from a room that embarrasses you and your whole family. Although, again, the worst case scenario of being embarrassed is much better than the worst case scenario of sitting in place until the situation becomes one you can't escape from. But just get up and go. Make sure that you're aware of your scenario. Watch the entrances, watch the exits. As soon as something looks off, it's time to hustle. So when to go, when to run is as soon as you suspect that there's trouble. As soon as you think there might be physical danger for your family. Now that gets us to where to run. And you want to run away from the danger, obviously. And you want to run towards either cover or concealment. Now for folks who don't know the difference between those two, cover will stop a bullet or stop most bullets or stop some bullets temporarily. Concealment stops line of sight. Now cover is better than concealment, but concealment is a lot better than nothing. And so you want to run first towards a place where you can break line of sight, get cover from bullets. Sorry for that little interruption, someone tried to call me. And then secondarily, you want to run towards an exit, a way to leave the immediate area, leave the building, leave the premises. Which gets us to rule number two of surviving this kind of situation, is, which is know where the exits are. If you run for cover or concealment in a dead end, you've set yourself up to not have a good ending to this situation. But if you run towards cover or concealment that either is right next to an exit or is the first step in a quick journey towards the exit, you're setting yourself up to survive. So know where the exits are and run towards cover or concealment in the direction of the exits. You don't have to make a long run towards one exit. Think of it in short sprinting stages. Now, rule number three of surviving this sort of situation, again, discussing where, is look and listen. One of the things about acoustics, especially in like a school or an auditorium, is those hard surfaces create echoes, and you might think that the danger is in one direction, but in fact it's the other direction, and you end up running directly towards the bad guys. So look carefully, listen, head towards an exit and away from the danger as best you can. And that deals with where. Now, the last question is how. And as I said before, rule number four is break line of sight. So you're going to be running in a short sprint towards something that breaks line of sight and hopefully gives you cover. Now, the question then is what, what way to run? And there, when I asked experts, I got about a 50-50 division at first between whether running in a straight line 
is best because it moves you fastest and gets you to cover concealment quicker, or whether you want to run in a zigzag pattern and make yourself more difficult to hit. Now that confused me a little bit. I asked a number of experts, but drilling down, it turned out that you want to actually do a little bit of both. You can run in basically three ways. You can either run parallel to the attacker's line of fire, you can run perpendicular to it across, or you can run at an oblique angle, some kind of diagonal. You never want to run parallel because anybody who's been shooting knows that that's really easy to target and fire at. Running perpendicular makes you harder to shoot, but it doesn't gain you a lot of distance. And then running at an oblique angle or a series of oblique angles if you have to cover a lot of distance that doesn't have a lot of protection kind of is the best of both worlds. It increases the distance while also making it harder to draw a bead on you. So what you want to do is identify the closest place that can break line of sight and hopefully give you cover as well that allows you to run at an oblique angle and go for it as fast as you can. If you can't find that, find one that, that requires you to move parallel and avoid at all costs, sorry, that allows you to move perpendicular and avoid at all costs moving parallel to the fire of the active shooter. So that's the where, the when, and the how of running in an active shooter situation. And we want to finish today with rule number five of surviving an active shooter situation, which is cardio. I know it's more fun to go to the range and pop off a few hundred rounds with your weapon, get your conceal and carry, and think about how you might stop something in his tracks like that. That kind of training isn't as good as being able to run. And if, if the first rule of surviving an active shooter situation is to run, you need to be able to run. You need to be able to run at a dead sprint for as far as you must go to get to safety. You need to be able to do that while carrying a 60-pound child. So, like so many other aspects of self-defense and safety, that basic physical fitness, doing the road work, getting your cardio and your leg strength, getting your arm strength back up, making sure your lower back can handle the load of your largest child who can't sprint, Getting all of that in place is just as important as any physical self-defense skill that you might want to master. So just a quick review. Today's talk was about the run part of run, hide, and fight. Rule number one is have a bias towards action. Move swiftly with focus when you see danger or even suspect danger. Rule number two, always know where the exits are in any place you happen to go. Rule number three, look and listen. Make sure that acoustics or other situations aren't making you think that the danger is in one direction when in fact it is in another direction. Rule four, break line of sight whenever you can. Remember that the only good news about an active situation, active shooter situation, is that usually that person's not there specifically to shoot you and your family. So if you can get out of sight and out of mind, you have a much better chance of surviving than if you are right there getting their full and undivided attention. And then rule number five is remember your cardio. It's not the most fun, but it is the most effective way to avoid danger and keep yourself and your family safe. Thank you for watching today. I know this is a very heavy topic. Uh, again, I am so sad and angry that I think it's a relevant topic, and I so hope that I'm wrong in thinking that it's becoming more relevant in these coming weeks. So stay safe, everybody. Tune in tomorrow, and we'll talk about the hide part of run, hide, and fight. And then the day after that, we'll talk about fighting. Thank you all so much. Stay safe.